Welcome to John Adams Presidency, a study guide. The election of 1796. In this first election since Washington became president, the Democratic Republican Party chose Thomas Jefferson to run for president and Aaron Burr to run for vice president. The Federalist Party chose John Adams for president and Thomas Pinckney for vice president. At this time, each elector cast two ballots. It wasn't specified whether they were president or vice president. They just voted twice. And the person who had the most votes became president, and the person with the second highest number of votes became the vice president. Each party assumed that its members would vote for its party's candidates for both president and vice president. The Federalists, however, did not vote for Thomas Pinckney. So the results of this election ended up with John Adams, a Federalist, for president, and Thomas Jefferson, a Democratic Republican, for vice president. This created a situation where conflict, tension, and stress were going to follow these people through John Adams' entire presidency. I cannot even imagine how difficult it must have been to work with someone who was in the opposite party had totally different beliefs about government. John Adams, the second president. As soon as he took office, Adams faced a crisis with the French. They did not like Jay's treaty that we had made with the British in order to get them to stop attacking our ships. Well, in their rebellion, the French began capturing U.S. ships in the West Indies, basically taking over where the British had left off. Some Americans called for war, but Adams, taking attack from Washington, hoped to be able to achieve peace and avoid going to war. Adams sent three ambassadors, Charles Pinckney, John Marshall, and Elbridge Gerry as ambassadors to negotiate with France. Charles de Talleyrand was the French foreign minister, and instead of meeting with the ambassadors, he sent three French spies to demand that America pay a bribe. He demanded a $10 million loan for France and $250,000 for himself. Well, you can imagine that all of the American ambassadors were outraged as Pinckney was and Pinckney said it clearly not a sixpence that would be like us saying not a penny today and the Americans walked out and as soon as possible set sail right back to America immediately upon their return to America the ambassadors reported to Adams who then informed Congress of the incident well Congress wanted the names of the three French spies but Adam wanting them to concentrate on France as a whole and not specifically these three people refused to tell them their names. He just called them X, Y, and Z. And that's how it became known as the X, Y, Z affair. The scandal went public in 1798 and Americans were outraged. The Americans' national slogan became millions for defense but not one cent for tribute. Tribute being another word for a bribe. We said, we'll pay money to defend our country, but we're not paying anybody a bribe for anything. The XYZ affair actually had the unexpected side effect of uniting the nation in their anger against France. However, John Adams refused to ask Congress for a declaration of war against France. He still hoped to retain peace. But he did something pretty smart. He strengthened our Navy, and France saw this, and they believed that America was going to declare war. Napoleon couldn't deal with that, and so this buildup of our Navy convinced the French to leave America alone and forced Talleyrand to apologize and promise to treat all future American ambassadors with respect. Many members of the Federalist Party were very unhappy with the way Adams had handled the French. Alexander Hamilton was very vocal about his desire for us to declare war. He thought that it would allow us a reason to strengthen our army and our navy, and he also thought that it would bring Democratic Republicans running to join the Federalist Party, since Democratic Republicans were pro-French. This disagreement about how to handle the French situation split the Federalist Party in two. 
and those who sided and supported Hamilton's ideas became known as the High Federalists, and those who stayed loyal to Adams and his beliefs still called themselves the Federalists. Despite his party's objections, especially those of Hamilton, John Adams sent a new set of ambassadors to negotiate with the French. This time, Napoleon, being busy trying to take Europe, signed the Convention of 1800, and this agreement promised that France would stop attacking our U.S. ships. And there you have some of the interesting and important facts about John Adams' presidency.